Hey guys, this is Fernando doing another video for the Mars Survivalist. In this case, reviewing the Falkneven DC4 sharpening stone. This stone that you see here. Falkneven makes excellent knives, as you, as you probably know already. It's a manufacturer based in Sweden. They do some of the best uh, survival and bushcraft knives. Uh, great quality. They also do a pretty decent sharpening stone. It's not perfect, I don't think so, because of some of the reasons we're going to be talking about in a second, but so far it's one of the most handy little stones that I've came across in my search for <laughs> uh, a perfect little sharpening stone. It does come with a little pouch, this one that you see here, has a diamond coated side, which we start talking already about some of the negative aspects. You see how it's losing that diamond powder, that diamond coating already. It's coming off way too soon for my taste. I mean, I haven't used it that bad at all, so as to see this kind of wear. And you still have a nice texture on the sides where it hasn't been used that much. But here in the middle, we're getting get, we are already getting to the metal underneath. That's that's not good, especially if, if it hasn't been used like for years with intense use. And this is supposed to be uh, the side, the diamond coated side is supposed to be the, the one that takes off the most material and you shouldn't be losing that coating that, that fast. The nice thing about it is that this other side is uh, ceramic whetstone which is actually synthetic sapphires. This side is excellent. This side does get the job done nicely. Now the funny thing is that Faulkner even says that you should not use water on this whetstone, which is kind of ironic because <laughs> you, you kind of need either water or oil for sharpening. Yes, it is true that with certain um, ceramic artificial stones uh, you can get by without water, but always the results Guys, let's be honest, the results are better if you have some sort of lubricant such as water. And with water, the results are actually pretty good. What I've read in some forums is that after using water, people saw that the, this metal plate detaches from the stone. And some were saying that probably the glue used is, it does not take well to water, the glue used to keep these two together. So they basically had to epoxy back the two together so as to um, put it back again. But, you know, honestly, I cannot just uh, sharpen without water. I don't like the results. So I just use water nonetheless. And if it does get detached, if Falling even hasn't uh, started using um, waterproof glue already, then I'll just glue it back myself, no big deal. I had actually a bit of a problem finding a, a knife that needed sharpening. I had I had these knives which are, are pretty great, have to do an actual review of this if I haven't done already, probably didn't. These are Hultaford knives, these are very cheap uh, hardware store knives, it, this, it's carbon steel, a typical um, Puko knife, probably made in Sweden as well carbon steel not much information besides that but these are already pretty sharp I really cannot start sharpening this, this stuff when, when, it, when it cuts this way you know it makes no sense so that, that's one of the problems I have most of, of my knives are are very well kept very sharp so um, uh, when actually when actually needing to find one uh, I have to look for something in this case I found this little knife which has um, it came from Argentina a little bone handle there uh, some mystery steel used. It is sharp enough, but you know, not that much. You, know, you can actually put your thumb in there and not get cut. So I'm gonna be sharpening this basically for demonstration purposes. The stone is a uh, hundred millimeters, ten centimeters by thirty-two millimeters. Cost twenty-five bucks, give or take, in Amazon. Um, the price is right for what it is. Again, it is not perfect. I cannot lie to you guys saying that I love the results I'm getting, especially with this, especially with the diamond side coming off this way and the fact that Falcon even recommends not using water on the stone is, is not very encouraging. But let's, let's, let's do it for a second and see what we get. This is a very small stone. You have to be careful not to cut yourself. Notice that the, the meaty, fleshy part of, of my hand there is very exposed, same as, as my fingers there. When you start working with, um, with some, in generally you would start with this side, which is the diamond coated one, but as you see, since we already lost <laughs> most, most of, the, of the diamonds there, it's not that great. 
Well, you can get by with the other side. Using the other side, first you start with circles. The angle is going to be depending on the bevel of the blade itself. Fog even in their website recommends using the same, leaving the same thickness as the thickness of a blade. That's not bad advice. It's a good, it's a good general advice. Now it's going to be depending uh, on the exact uh, geometry of the knife you're sharpening. Of course, there's, there's going to be differences and variations there. I suggest for starting with uh, circles like these, you know, with cir uh, circular motion until you get some of the material out of the way. Yeah, not much diamond left in there. Still enough, I suppose. But this makes me question the the results I will be getting from this this tone a year from now if just after after a few months of use I'm already losing that much of the diamond coating you see some of it gathering there that's good that means I'm getting material out of the way this takes a lot of practice and I get it that a, a bigger stone properly done using a wet rag so as to keep it steady on a nice table and such is better but this is probably what you would end up doing in the field if you have a small stone in your backpack on the go you will not have a nice table to get the job done you will have something like this so this is the kind of thing that needs to be practiced it's surprising the amount of people that call themselves knife, fan, knife fans knife collectors but they cannot sharpen a knife this way you really have to do it. You really have to uh, improve your technique and be able to put a razor sharp edge back on your knife. Okay. Start working the other side a little bit. Again, circle of motions. Try to get this done in, in, in less than 10 minutes. Let's hope, let's hope I manage to do it. This side, as I was saying before, is pretty good. It gets that nice slurry, pasty thing going on, which you will find in good stones. Sharpening stones, natural wet stones, for you guys that don't know about it, those are, are sometimes very expensive. Talking about some wet stones, Japanese uh, wet stones costing hundreds of bucks. Very expensive stuff. Why is it, is it worth it? I don't know, I, I've got good results with artificial stones such as this ones. If they're good, if, they, if the grain is consistent and, and good quality, generally the results are good. You see how the slurry part tells you if you're getting the angle right? This requires quite a bit of practice so as to be consistent. The key word is keeping the angle consistent at all times. And that when doing it offhand like this, does require practice. I've been sharpening knives for yeah over a decade and I'm still not good at it so <laughs> you need to practice you need to practice quite a bit. First circle of motions like this trying to keep your angle right trying to keep the bevel flat on the stone as you work it up Falkney even says that the, the stone does not wear a, a, as bad as other stones and they are right. This is a very nice artificial uh, whetstone. It's not getting, you know, like hollowing there, which is good. After a while, when I think that I'm getting closer to the final edge, I move it in the direction, in the opposite direction of the edge. That, um, makes for a nicer finer edge because you're not uh, going in the direction uh, of the, the finer part of the knife you know the, the thinner it gets so I prefer in this stage going against the edge and not forward where all those little grains would get stuck in there and uh, maybe hurt my edge a little bit more all matter of personal taste but these, this is the way I've been getting good results for now, the technique I've been using for a long time, 
and the one I'm happy with. Circular motion at first, then back. Well, over 10 minutes already. Let's take a look and see how well we're doing or not. Cleaning the knife a little bit there. When you can, what you can do is actually use the leather sheath if you're not too picky about it. You can use it so as to strop it a little bit. Ideally, you would use this side. It has a bit, a bit more something like that. Yeah, not that great. Let's try it out. See how we're doing. Well, still not great, still not nothing to brag about, but it does cut. You see how the, the paper uh, is not a nice, perfectly even cut. It is a little bit more jagged, that's not great, but you know, little by little you do get there. Basically, guys, that's the technique. That's the technique you, you want to be uh, working on. Yeah, definitely not not perfect yet, but you know, if we're a knife that was pretty much without any decent uh, edge in 10 minutes, that's uh, that's pretty good. You will need like 10 more minutes so as to get a, a nice result, but that's the technique you have to be using. Bit more time, bit more patience, and you will get back to a, a nice razor sharp edge that just just slides through whatever it is that you're cutting and not making that kind of effort. So basically that's guys my review on the Falcon Even Stone. It is okay, it's not great uh, because of that, because uh, of, of the issue about not, the, the suggestion of not using water and most of all because of this, because of the diamond coating uh, coming loose so fast. I would have liked to keep it a little bit longer. So that's it guys, remember to subscribe, take care, have a great day, see you in our next video, bye bye.